Hi, Beirut Buzzers, and welcome back to a new episode of Beirut uh, Buzz, the podcast brought to you by Beirut.com. This is Lynn, and hosting this episode with me is Talien. Hi, Talien. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I bet you are as excited as me for this special episode because we're going to be interviewing the executive editor of Beirut.com herself. Hi, Lama. Hi, guys. (laughs) How are you? I feel like I'm going to regret this, (laughs) but I'm good. (laughs) I was going to ask you if you're ready to answer all the tricky questions that we have prepared for you. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think if you guys can make me um, regret this by the end of the episode, you would have done a very good job. (laughs) So I'm I'm very ready. So I don't know how to introduce you, but I'm going to let you describe yourself in a sentence. (laughs) Um, hmm, this is like this is like therapy. Um, <laughs> describe myself as uh, you, as in like my capacity is to like what I do. So I work with an incredible team to produce like all the content and all the interesting things that we do with Beirut.com. Um, and we have several properties. So we have the Beirut.com English property, as the listeners should know, and then we also have the Arabic websites. We dipped our toe into a French website that never really materialized properly, but it's still around. And so that's kind of what I do on a on like a day to day basis. Uh, very similar, I think, to what you guys would do. I think Lynn and I should try like to give it a shot, like describe Lama in a sentence. Maybe that would make things <laughs> a little more fun. Okay, and I usually when I think of Lama, first word that comes to mind is like a dog lover because I think that's the most prominent thing. Yes. Um, also, someone that knows how. To get things done, uh, like efficiently, very quickly, and like she knows um, when to be serious and when to like joke around. So I think she has a good balance of things. This is a safe space, Lynn. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree with what Talin said. I think I don't have anything else to add besides you no. Know, she's very motivating. Oh, I'd like Mabit will something that is very motive you know, Mabit will motivating things but and you feel her energy it's such a positive energy from um, yeah <laughs> even on. when she like shuts down all your pitches you still feel yeah. good <laughs> yeah it's also bad to come with other pitches <laughs> I, I do the i do the um you know like the compliment sandwich where you do like good thing bad thing good thing so that's a great idea let's not do it and let's do something <laughs> else um no, yeah, but just to give like the listeners kind of a little bit more context, I've been working with uh, Talin for around a year and six months. And then Lean, I think around a year it's been or probably a little bit less. Yeah, less. Like yeah. Seven yeah, but it, um, I don't know. It's been really great to kind of, um, it, we had like an interesting um, relationship because you guys are were the first team that I didn't really meet in person up until um, more recently because we started working while it was um, like COVID was still rampant and and so we were purely online and um, for some reason I think it in a weird way I think it helped because everybody kind of had the uh, uh, their like online personality and and we were all trying to make uh, these connections like that were purely online and then when we met in person it was just like transcended and um you know worked out for the best mm. yeah i felt like it was a little bit easier like no for me like meeting people is really awkward like like going like first day on the job going to the office plus it would have been like super awkward for me because i know it's my first job but you know like being online made it so much easier yeah and you tend to i think um you like love the person before you meet them, which helps because yeah. when they walk into the office and they start, you know, it just I think people get annoyed with each other in office spaces just over nothing. Um, so we managed to bypass that. Yeah, I I joined the team. Like and you guys have never seen each other before. But <laughs> you work so well together. Um, so let's talk a bit about Beirut.com. The website is one of the very first news and entertainment websites to exist in Lebanon. So how did this project start and were you there from the beginning? Oh, you joined later. 
Um, so I wish I was there from the beginning. Actually, the website is uh, not many people know it's 20 years old. Uh, so oh. yeah, it's like your age, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is not my age. Um, but, um, so it's over 20 years old and, uh, it started out as something very different and then it evolved. It started out, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, as I think it was a place for like people to uh, a little bit of like a community. Uh, so you could sign up for like an email and you could chat with like-minded people. It had like a chat function. Um, and then it was, uh, there was like a section about like photographs, uh, you know, where you could like submit your photos of Beirut and, and things like that. Um, I think that was the first uh, identity that it had. It then grew to include, you know, uh, photographers going around the city and, and covering events. Um, and then the content creation part came. So kind of the more um, current uh, format of what you see that we do has been around for, uh, I would say around like eight years or 10 years maybe. I really like how it started out, like when you were explaining it in my head, I was like, wow, it's like a Lebanese MySpace. I don't know what MySpace is, but I feel like this is the vibe that it gives off. A hundred percent. It was like, it was a, it was like a community kind of project and stuff. And um, it, it evolved and I think it kind of matched the identity of the city. So for like that period of time where it was extremely popular for people to just go and look at photographs of themselves. And, you know, you had all these magazines um, where people would just be at a party and wondering if like the photographer uh, took a picture of them. This is before you guys um, <laughs> started going out. Uh, this, this is also pre-social media. Um, so yeah, that was, that was um, Heida. And then I joined, um, wow, it's been, it's been like six years um, since I joined and seven oh, years wow. because yeah, I, I did a year as a, a writer and then I, as an editor, I, it's been seven, six years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And what would you say is the most exciting part about your job and the least exciting part of it? Oh, okay. So the least, mm, I'm going to start with the most exciting. The most exciting okay. is definitely um, contributing to like the identity of our country, I would say, in a humble way not uh, not in a you know unrealistic way um but i think that the work that we do so whether it's you guys um writing guides or shedding light on different initiatives or anything like that um we're kind of setting the tone of what we want the country to look like and and you know the stories we want to emulate and things like that so um that is very uh, exciting for me. Um, whenever I hear that we manage to make like a positive difference for a small business, um, it's very heartwarming. The least exciting, um, you know, it does entail quite a bit of being on social media, which is not my favorite thing. So, but I wouldn't say that, that it's not exciting. I would just say that maybe it's like slightly taxing that you kind of have to keep with the trends and stuff like that i think yeah. you guys would feel the same mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah i remember like, like back in august like things got really hard and all we were posting were blog posts because of the news mm -hmm. um and everything going on sometimes it's like it takes a toll like on your mental health try uh it, 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 you're right it's particularly when you have to uh, write about news and be in the loop, it's difficult to kind of disconnect. Uh, yeah. But I I also like, I see the value in that, you know, I'm always somebody who's, uh, I'd rather be in the know than not. So, so mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask you questions um, uh, from Katie. She writes for uh, the beirut.com in Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, her first question is, what does a normal workday at beirut.com looks like? Oof. Um, <laughs> um, I think you guys it. could 
الانسر هذا بيفور افتر اي بيفور افتر كوفيد honestly i think this is something that that i would like to kind of revert back to um we had a very interesting uh work life in the office because we had a bit of a chaotic work uh you know set up i think talin you got a little bit of a taste of it uh when we went in <laughs> a couple yeah. of times it's just um i think it has to do with the fact that i've had people on the team who are extremely like eccentric and then uh, just working together on creative things you tend to get extremely comfortable and so it gets very chaotic and and uh, very fun so before it would be i would say get into the office there's like three hours of gossip that takes place and then force someone to write something so we can publish it and then another three hours of gossip and then kind of try to hammer out the rest of the tasks before the day is over for now i think i'm gonna switch the question up a little bit and say like what it is that i personally do every single day that i find contributes to my work day so Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll check Twitter because I think it's uh, one of the best sources of news to make sure we didn't miss something big. Um, second thing I'll do is I'll check email and uh, to make sure I didn't miss something important. And normally I didn't because I'm not like a doctor. Um, and then I'll connect with you guys and kind of feel things out and we'll feel out how the country is doing and, you know, what do we think people want to do today or what do they want to read today and then i think the most important thing that i do is i'll check the previous day's content and how it did and make an assessment based on that so hala la i know you have like you have your own flow and you th- we think oh, like all of us do have our own flow with work what's something you think you would like to change not just like um, the workflow like on the website maybe like the identity of the website specifically Um, I think that the identity of the website is constantly changing, honestly, to reflect, you know, the people's tastes and what they feel like doing. So we evolved from having extremely like, uh, we evolved from longer um, posts to sh- very short posts during COVID when people had little to no attention spans. And then now we're kind of um, shifting to long form writing again. Um Something I would want to change uh, right now, I mean, you guys already know we're working on a website re- redesign that I'm very excited about. I think that should um, give us a nice little facelift and make our content easier to access uh, for like the readers that are not quite sure how to navigate our website. Um, is that what you meant? Did I answer your question or did you mean uh, what I would it change? It could be, it's like open for interpretation plus mm-hmm. no it could be something actually like technical it could be maybe um maybe additional things we could be doing th- well, something you'd would like you to change? try out I'd, i'd want to hear what you would want to change I'll, i think we pitched at some point to have like community posts and not mm-hmm. necessarily like contributors with you know people maybe like not really a chat room but something along the lines of like people being able to like interact or Uh, or post their own thing a kid with um, supervision yeah um, yeah. because we always get lots of messages of people asking if if like they had an article they wrote or like even a poem or something and they'd be like oh can we post this on your website but you know it, it would be like cute to have something hick on the website i think it's interesting well, i'm a nosy person for you know, i'd enjoy <laughs> like scrolling through something like that I actually agree. Um, you know, not too long ago, we set up an email address. I think it's community at Beirut.com where people um, could send in their own posts so that they could be published. And I thought people would jump at this. Uh, we didn't get many hits. I got a few of them that were really horrible. Um, <laughs> this, um, I think if we were to work on kind of uh, advertising that feature again and working to find a space for it on the website that we could... maybe have something um you know uh, valuable because then we could just have like different people's opinions in one section yeah because mm-hmm. like lately ever since like covid people have been starting their own pages they've been working on their hobbies their talents that's often like what we get like on our messages uh either someone that started out as a new artist or what else <laughs> talents there are yeah, and the singers uh, musicians uh, people who started their own business um, 
they're always reaching out. We can't really keep up all the time. Fa, it would have I'm getting been nice a lot time. of. Uh, I'm getting so many hits for music. I'm, I'm finding it very interesting. There's like a musical thing happening in the country. Maybe Lean would know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, everyone's into producing and making music right now, which I love. I personally love that. Um, it's nice to see like people um, trying uh, new things out, and um, the music they're making is very experimental. Most of it. Um, so, but it hands look good. Such as did in terms of That's music. A, such a creative um, way of saying yeah. bad music. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's so experimental. Um, no, but I agree. I'm, I'm getting like, um, I'm finding like the younger people are kind of delving into their artistry, etc. Like you were saying. And um, it, it is cool. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, it's not as effective to write about music uh, as it is to kind of, you know, play it or display it in a video or something. Yeah. So um, when these like, PR agencies or bands or something they want written coverage um, it tends not to really translate that well mm, yeah I agree um, okay and this one <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite article published on the website was Anna person can it com before I joined um, uh, the team mm-hmm. and I used to wake up at 6 a.m. and read all the lists, listomanias, um, uh, articles before going to school. Uh, <laughs> and that was like my favorite memory from high school, <laughs> reading the list before going to school. Oh my God, school. I think this is my favorite story. Um, that's, that's like the best thing I've heard. Um, do I have a favorite article? I do, I have, I have several favorite articles, I think. Um, there so i have a favorite article that i've written and then i have a favorite article that somebody else has written and um they're both a series so the my favorite thing that i've personally done is i don't you guys are i'm not sure you'll remember this but there was this show around five or six years ago called the sisters and it was these three horrible girls um who are now like influencers and they had like a reality show and i would just review the episode every week and it was oh always, my God. I just, it was like, I, 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 I believed them, essentially. I like to think I believed them <laughs> off the network. Um, and at one point, like, LBC had to write me and be like, can you stop oh doing my, this? Oh, my God. Yeah. And um, so that was really, that was d- definitely fun. Something somebody else has written is... Uh, um, no, oh, there's so there, there really is so much. I I'll pick a favorite for just take it for like each of you just to make things nice and you know square. For Talin, I think you killed it. A, what was it like a couple of weeks ago when you wrote um, the something about Hunger Games? How, oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you wrote like how your grandparents could be in Hunger Games or something. Yeah, how your Lebanese family would survive the Hunger Games. I th- I thought that was like <laughs> exceptional. I thought that was so well done and it was really hilarious. So, and that's the kind of content that you can, you know, read and laugh and you can watch a video about it and laugh and uh, you can read an Instagram post uh, of it and laugh. So I thought that was perfect. For Lean, I like all your throwback stuff that it just is feels like a warm hug. And I think the last one that you did was, uh, was it School Memories? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I th- <laughs> thought like that to me, you and your sister are just um, like the nostalgia queens, I think. <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Lean is Christina's sister who Christina used to write for Beirut.com for a long time. And she was would always go viral with these like 90s posts. Um, yeah, and then something else that kind of sticks out as a favorite was, I forgot who wrote it. I think it was a group effort, but I think it was like spearheaded by somebody on the old team, uh, Fatima. She wrote uh, 25 things you could say during a Lebanese lunch and sex or something. Yeah. And I thought that was 
like that was hilarious and it was very well received and then also very poorly received, which was also very funny. Um, so yeah, those are, those are the hits. Yeah. I was going to say that one was my favorite with the one that's, um, uh, like how many ways uh, Lebanese po- politicians are like your toxic ex. I think that one's really funny. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the Lebanese politician ones are funny. The t- Tinder one, there was one Tinder one I think you had worked on or Marianne had worked on that was also great. Honestly, there's like 60,000 articles, so it's very difficult <laughs> to, um, to pinpoint one. I think we should get to like really juicy questions. Yeah. Without naming people, Akid. I will but... name people. Ah, okay. <laughs> Who's my least favorite? I person. think this is no. the question I'm waiting for. Who's my least Instagram favorite person? Question. I've no. Oh, <laughs> like maybe like the most like office disaster that happened with a certain person, then just just changed the entire vibe. No matter if anything that drastic ever happened. Oh, the only thing that really comes to mind was uh, three or four years ago, uh, we had an office Christmas party that ended in like five of us in a ditch that way because everybody got beyond wasted and so it was like 12 p.m and uh there was like a lot of alcohol and we were a small group of people and cut to like three hours later we have like four random people in the office who I have no idea who they are. It's like some friend of a friend. And this one girl is on the table singing Little Mermaid. <laughs> and I'm kind of trying, I'm like in this gray area where I'm like having a really good time, but I'm also, uh, you know, we're across the hall from our boss and we're like, we're t- five minutes away from being just completely kicked out. And um, yeah, that party went on for um like the full night and that changed i think the vibe because nobody could kind of really look at the other person in the eye the next day (laughs) yeah i wish we could do like christmas office parties i'm pretty sure those would be interesting hand out with us like the covid baby we We, we definitely can we can do well what's earlier than christmas easter next week Uh, yeah that is next week Uh, that would be really fun. I love something more. There's uh, something inherently more chaotic about Christmas than there is about Easter. Uh, but I'm sure we could make something uh, work. Hala, you you mentioned like being across the hall from your boss. I'm assuming that's Ziad, right? Right. So, uh, the, hey, the, the most asked question, I think, which is who owns Beirut.com? Um, is that what you want to ask? No, I just, I wanted to ask because I know I've met Ziad like just maybe twice and he's such a chill relaxed person and I wanted to know if he was always this way like with you when you were like starting out Mm, he is the most chill person um he is he is extremely chill he's uh very laid back he's very cool and um uh, very intelligent and supportive and just great to work for and with um, I think he has his moments where he's not the most chill, but uh, he's he's never, you know, he's always very supportive and nice and fun. I think that lots of people are very curious about, I mean, I always get asked, like, who owns Beirut.com? Um, I, won't, I won't breach his privacy, like a Google search can give you the answer, but um, I think what the audience should know is he's somebody who's not political. Um, he's someone who adores the city and what else can I say he's he doesn't have an agenda beyond creating and sharing great content and kind of contributing to our social landscape Um, because lots of people I think um, always wonder like oh is there like a political agenda behind Beirut.com so that's the answer yeah and if someone asked me how would you describe your boss I just be like, like he smiles all the time and he's really, really tall, so it's intimidating sometimes. <laughs> so like, I, I try to like stay seated whenever he's around because like it scares me. Like he's really tall, small. <laughs> yeah, he's quite tall. He's um, smiley and he's very. Uh, I don't know. He's just very chill and very supportive, and he's Hickey is just cool. Like uh, has never really. Uh, you know, said like, don't do this or you can't do this. He's always very eager to let us try whatever it is that we want to try. And 
Um, so yeah, that's it's it's just been uh, you know, a treat. Uh, the thing I like most about the team is I you know it's very chill, and I was worried you know to be thrown into a work environment that was very strict, but you know the vibes were were super friendly and very comforting, warm heck from the start, and it's still this way, and it's really nice. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like um, since I basically started uh, to to just work with different types of people, there's a very specific personality that I cannot work with, which is this personality that needs a lot of um, discipline in order to to produce. Like, and that's what I love about I think the current team, where you guys are very, uh, you have like great work ethic. I don't need to. Uh, you know, worry about you, you know, dicking around or doing this and that. You're, you're very dedicated to getting your work done. Um, I think it's like a bummer for for adults to work in a situation where they have to be like, what did you do today? Did you do anything? Blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it sucks, you know, it's not fun for you. It's not fun for me. And um, it takes away from the experience. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think Lean was like, I don't think you were here when we had like new recruits. Oh, holy like, shit, that's, uh, that's what no. I was going to say. I've yes. always read about it. Best in hey, hey, you so many stories. So what <laughs> hey, fix your stories. Well, I know, like, only within, like, a... I keep seeing each other, I'm probably worse. But sometimes you just deal with people and you're like, and you know, there's a lot that are, they would love to have this job and you feel like they just don't really care. And No, there was no one worse. I know who you're thinking about. There was no one worse. Than <laughs> she was the worst um it was um i think it was that period of time where we were doing like kind of these um uh, like mass recruiting almost where we had like lots of training contracts happening at the same time um or uh, whatever they're called uh like probation periods um so the people were not I don't know if they didn't take it seriously or what. And this one girl is just such a nightmare. It was, it was such a nightmare. It was like, do you remember Tadian? Mm. It depends because there were several nightmares. I just I'm, I'm literally one. talking about I'm talking about Sarah. It's like, oh, oh okay. uh, my f- five grandparents died. My uh, goldfish is uh, having a heart attack. It was one excuse after another. She lasted like three days before I was like, you need to leave. Uh, uh, I remember who wait, you weren't really saying so much about Fatra because you know I how we started out together. Fab. Oh wait, it depends. We actually had several Sarahs. I know that's why I gave myself the luxury of naming her. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, but I think I know who it is. But um, but um, uh, and there was someone, someone else that just stopped showing up to work. I completely. Yeah, that was uh, someone. Just stopped, uh, uh, off the just, just stopped answering. Uh, but okay, she, they so ghosted us. How how many people did not pass the probation period? Um, <laughs> no, I think it's easier to say who passed the probation period. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's just us. It's you, Talin, Katie, and Joe. So just the existing team. Because I didn't really. Um, I think the others. There was like there were five others um, who were at different times, like on probation or not on probation. Mm-hmm. It's not probation. It's like I call it a trial. Probation is a bad word. What are some of the most oddest messages you have received on the Beirut City Guide? Oof, no, where like did you need a full episode? Um, <laughs> it's not Instagram. It's uh, two places. I think it's we have a function on our website where. Um, It's now kind of been faded out a little bit, but back when we used to have a, a very like strong directory, say you wanted to, you know, go to a restaurant or whatever. So you would search like, you know, swim club and you would click the profile and it would say like that you can message them. And the way that message function works is that it sends a message to the restaurants you know if we have their email and then it will send us a carbon copy of that message so over the years i've kind of been fielding like different messages from hundreds of people to like various different businesses everything ranging from like literally there was one where a guy was like 
uh, he was messaging some like uh, clinic and he was describing a problem that he had with his penis. And, oh my God. Yeah. And I, I think I have it actually. I'm going <laughs> to... I'll, I'll get you that screenshot. Um, so there's that genre of like disaster. Um, there are also like lots where, um, you know, you write something about like first dates or whatever. Someone writes something and then, you know, the comments are all like, uh, I don't know. Like we used to get these uh, incels, incel <laughs> style, style comments. I, I, can't, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I think you guys uh, field quite a few strange ones. Who oh, yeah, like sometimes I just wonder why we have people that aren't Lebanese like at all like Mahasun bil Lebanese and they'd be sending messages either like in a different language or in English just um a few those types of people and then there's like there was this one mother like this old guy and he wanted to come visit Lebanon with his wife and he was asking I about places that, yeah. to go that was cute right Yeah actually I yeah. ended up like answering him because I felt bad I was like, hey, I don't know. Also, I think because I think the domain name kind of throws people where they think it's more of like a government authority than it actually is. Uh, you know, Beirut.com definitely sounds like, you know, in any other country, if you heard like London.com, you would be like, that's the municipality of London. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's certainly. Um, uh, we can't talk about usernames, hello, Pess, because one issue like we keep dealing with is people giving us shit for being a city guide and like talking about politics or mentioning like news or whatever's going on in the country. But like that's mm. kind of like annoying. Uh, so you, yeah, to like clear that up once and for all, which we, <laughs> I think we tried to do several times. Twitter and Instagram will not have let us have a dot in our username. So we cannot be Beirut.com on Twitter or on Instagram. So way before I joined, it was kind of, I, I don't know who came up with it. It was Hike branded Beirut City Guide. And then um, we're stuck in this like between a rock and a hard place where we don't want to change it because it's become very well known. And then at the same time, it's not very reflective of the kind of thing we do. Uh, but Scamian people are sticklers, Yanni. No, do you think every mug that says world's best dad is belongs to a best dad? Like, calm down. We're not the we're not a city guide, but we're we do offer guides as well. Uh, just I think people's issue primarily like is the fact and no they want to get away from what's going on, but they don't want to listen to what's like the news or all of the bad things happening. But you know, you're at a point where you can't really separate those two things like i think there are some times where you have to talk about what's going on regardless of what type of platform you have yeah i also think by, by the way just to, on this point um our website is extremely uh caters to, to this type of person like to a t wherein you can seek out the type of content that you want very easily so if you go to the guide section you can practically ignore every uh political and news item uh, that's on our website where if you want to uh, ignore the guides you can go to the blog section and only get the news so if you just know how to navigate it I think you get exactly what you want from the content uh, this eh, you know on social media obviously we do share a little bit of everything uh, that's like the best thing I've heard so far like out of Kilshi, like this entire year and a half experience is when we went to the office and you talked about the, the box that's on the shelves. No matter if this is okay, Kevin, to mention a lot. Because Lean wasn't there when the you box? talked about the story. Ah, the, oh, the collar, the collar yeah. story. No, I'll share yeah. that story. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. So this is, I'll put a picture up on, uh, on the, like in the comments of this podcast four years ago I can't really remember at this point but so I was uh, dating a gentleman and he uh, it ended up like kind of not working out for many reasons and then cut to like a couple months later it's my birthday and I get a gift to the office and I was like oh my god gift I'm so excited and I open it and it was it's like this dog collar and I was like okay and I, okay, I took it on the chair I was like I have a dog I'm I'm sure who and it didn't have a, like a name or anything 
and Talene, you you saw the collar. Like it, yeah. it's uh, it's funny looking. So it doesn't really scream dog at you. <laughs> but yeah. um, so I kind of like I'm trying to figure out like who did it and texting my friends. I'm like, did someone send me a gift? Um, and then I get a message from him and he's like, did you get my gift? And I was like, oh, yeah. And he's like, he, I can't remember what he said, but something like, yeah, it's because you're a bitch or something. <laughs> and I have to say I respected him for that one. Um, that was intense. <laughs> so, so the collar is still at the office. I cannot bring myself to throw it away. Um, it's pink and it's hideous. And it's like, it's like almost a slave collar of sorts. And um, yeah, that'll stay at the office forever. <laughs> it's a relic at this point. But that's so creative. Like, how long ago was this? Like, four years ago? I'm pissed anyone would do this now. Like, I don't think, like, people are that petty. They just, like, this the most they would so do is, like, post something. Or, like, block them. But, like, that's that's a nice level of creative. I, I really, I, I have to say, like, I respected it. I didn't, um, he was such a loser <laughs> that I did not see him coming up with anything creative. And then, but for me, it was like, oh, wow, you really put an effort. Because he lived in Dubai. And then I was like, you put oh. an effort to fucking ship something to my office. And then, like, you paid for this item just to get me to feel annoyed. <laughs> um, but I wasn't. It turned out it was, like, the funniest day ever. Anjad. Uh I, I remember we can, we can all t- take turns trying the collar on. <laughs> but, but what's really funny, I think, is that when I first res- re- got it, I was very confused because um, it has like, um, you saw the packaging, Talene, it's yeah. very strange. It's uh, It has like French, um, what do you call it? Like uh, postage stamps on it. Uh, so I was, like, I was like, who do I know in France? And I was like kind of messaging a bunch of people. And um so I snap picture and I send it to my friends and they're all trying to be nice because they're not sure who it's from. And so they're like, oh, it's, I guess you could wear it with a dress. And everyone's <laughs> trying to be very nice about it. And then I'm like, guys, it's a, like, it's a hundred percent a dog collar. So yeah, that's the collar pic- story. We're going to, we'll upload a picture, I guess. <laughs> if you're listening to this, please send us more <laughs> insulting gifts and items. Uh, we have three new people on the team. Yeah, but uh, just so you know, <laughs> we need more, we need more callers. <laughs> <laughs> Office uniform, how bad? If Andret, there's a lot of. Uh, I just realized how much like energy it took from his day. Before we wrap up, I, I'll ask you guys a question. So, like, what is what's your favorite thing about working? Uh, with Beirut.com and then your least favorite and be very careful when listing your least favorite. <laughs> uh, Lian, do you want to go first? Um, yeah. Okay, I'll start with my least favorite thing. Um, it's coming Instagram. up with... Instagram. No, no, I love I love Instagram. It's coming up with a pitch. Like hmm. sometimes, be battle for your name, but I don't know what am I going to write about tomorrow. Oh my God, do so not coming, disrupt your sleep. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> coming I'll help up you with out. a pitch, I think I would say this is the hardest part of the job. But everything else is super fun. And um, um, I love doing research and... It, um, like I introduce myself to new places and you get to meet a lot of people um, and um, it, it's it's fun <laughs> yeah I, and I, no, it, not, not every like every day is not the same yeah, right? and the, topics, the coming you. up with pitches thing is so um it's it's like um I think something that I've seen across, you know, for myself and across like every team, um, it's because we're, um, we're, our output is so high. You know what I mean? Like we pump out a lot of content. So at one point you start to feel like, oh my God, I, I've, you know, expended every single one of my ideas. Um, but there's always more. Uh, Like we'd have days where we like write 10 articles. And other days where it's just three on the sheet until like yeah. 3 p.m. And it's annoying, but I know that's how like the process is. You just get used to it. <laughs> hey, exactly. Talene, you're up. 
Uh, pets just for now, my least favorite thing is just like the fact that I'm part time and I work for four hours. So it's such a time crunch and I have to like laugh it out because I don't want to be like, you know, that person just just shows up, writes one piece and then disappears because there's a lot to keep up with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously I want to like make sure, you know, like the rest of the team doesn't feel like mad routine to, to work on content when everyone's like making an equal effort. But it's really annoying. Like the one time I did full time, I was because I had like like double the time to work on the same things that I work on now. So I think that's my least favorite thing. But you know, maybe like from like in a month, I'll be full time because I'll graduate. A hundred percent. Yeah. But exactly. then we can we can repeat the podcast in a month and I'll tell you what I You'll like. tell us. Exactly. <laughs> All right. I think we've covered a lot. I think we've given everybody an earful. Uh, eh, I guess should we do. should wrap up the podcast. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Lama. Uh, eh, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we'll be doing this like maybe once a year. So we yeah. can like update everyone on what's going on with the team. Maybe we someone. Maybe we had a new nightmare. Yeah, eh? 100% uh, always possible. <laughs> okay uh thanks to everyone who, uh, who was tuning in with us uh the beirut buzz podcast is brought to you by beirut.com and is available on apple google podcast spotify and anchor as well as our youtube channel beirut videos so don't forget to follow and rate if you enjoyed it make sure to leave us your feedback and drop some su- suggestions for potential guests in the comments until next week bye